Welcome to Fight Club. And before we start off, there's a lot of weird quotes in this movie, like In this world, I see you're stalking elk through the Grand Canyon forest around the ruins of Rockefeller Center. You're the all singing, dancing crap of the world. Worker bees can leave, even drones can fly away. The queen is their slave. And you got shit like I am Jack's complete lack of surprise, I am Jack's cold sweat, I am Jack's fucking burst appendix, and I don't know what any of that means, but I'm a guess it's a bunch of I'm insane, fuck society, screw corporate America type of shit, I don't know, so I just want you to be aware that that stuff exists now, on to the movie, and we start off with Eduardo Nortano, and a gun in his mouth, he's sweating profusely, then a cut to a van full of explosives, cut to Ed and some big old man boobs, cut to Ed and his shitty ass dead end boring as fuck shit job, and we find out that he has got insomnia and he's addicted to buying a Furniture. Then his doctor tells him to go to a support group for people with no balls, enter Bobby bitch titties. And they're all having a group crying session where Ed cries for the first time in 6 months and for some reason that lets him sleep like a baby. So he becomes addicted to a new thing, going to support groups and crying so he can sleep peacefully. Skin cancer, leukemia, kidney disease, parasites, you name it, he had them all. And went to all the support groups to continue sleeping. Shit was going so good he even hallucinated a fucking penguin, I know, crazy shit man. But then this whole Marla comes in and she ruins everything. For some reason, her simply existing kills his sleeping boner. You see, she too just showed up to support groups, although she has nothing of that support group in her. She just fucking likes the coffee or something, I don't know. And he doesn't like that so much so that instead of hallucinating a penguin, he hallucinates her. No good, no good. So what do you do? He confronts her, alright? Being all like, you're a faker. You ain't here hallucinating fucking penguins, I am. You need to fucking leave or I'm gonna expose your ass like it's YouTube 2016. DJ King Quat's gonna make a fucking video about you and everything. Alright, if you do that, I'm gonna just expose you, cause you're a lying fuckface too. No, you son of a bitch. So the bitch steals some clothes, does some suicidal shit, and then they come to an agreement to split down time with support groups evenly like they're splitting the custody of a child in a divorce. She does some more suicidal shit and then they exchange numbers just in case they want to switch groups. Now, I understand that he wants to go to a group every day so he can sleep every day, but those cannot be the only groups that are present that day that will give him the opportunity to cry, right? Just look at all these ads. So just pick one of them, right? That fulfills your needs of making your eyes sweat and be on your merry way. However, I think that doesn't even matter. I think he's already mentally deranged. Next up, we got Ed traveling all over America to check out some of the cars that his company manufactured that has major design flaws that end up killing people and see if they would do a recall on them, which they never do because, you know, money and shit. And he tells this information to every single passenger he meets on a fucking flight, which makes me think he never signed an NDA or has no idea what it means. Then this lady asks him what car company he works for and he's just like, a major one. Now this coupled with the fact that they showed us an almost unrecognizable burnt wreck of a car with a fake badge on it makes me think that this movie is hiding the real manufacturer of this car to be deep and cool and shit or they're avoiding a lawsuit from said major car company. However, as you may recall, I said almost unrecognizably burnt wreck. That is because I'm 90% sure that this is a 1999 or earlier Lincoln Town Car. And a quick Google search confirms this. Now, given that Ford has owned Lincoln since forever, this major car company is Ford. Ha! Think I wouldn't notice, movie. Think I wouldn't notice, but I fucking did. Not me. I did. Eat my shit, movie. Okay, so I did some more detective work and apparently other people have found this out before me, but still, I found that on my own. So I'm still proud of myself. Moving on, on a flight back home, he hallucinates this and then meets Tyler GG. One crazy motherfucker that's super enthusiastic about homemade explosives, he gives him his car, they land, and Ed goes home to his condo to find out that it has been blown up with every single thing inside of it, including his beloved IKEA furniture has been burnt to a crisp. He can't go up there and with nowhere to stay, he finds Marla's number and calls her up and he's like, no, I'm a call Tyler. Okay, so I understand you're a sad sack of shit with no friends, but you clearly have enough social skills to strike up conversation with complete randos. You must have like a co-worker you know would be enough to like crash at their place, or even the doorman that asks you if you have a place to stay, your doctor, fucking Bob, whatever, all I'm saying is your first two choices to call for help shouldn't be a woman that you have expressed nothing but hatred for and a little fucking terrorist, or whatever, you know, dude's got issues, what you gonna do? So he meets Tyler at a bar, they drink, talk about some stuff, we live in a society, blah 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 blah, Ed asks him if he could crash at his place, and he's like, sure! Hit me. What? So this is right around where we get a little bit of a history lesson about Tyler. You see, by day, he is an explosive soap salesman. By night, he is a projectionist that splices in porn pictures into kids' movies and a waiter at a fancy place where he shits and pisses in rich people's food. Now let's cut back to where we were. So Ed hits Tyler and Tyler's like, Vibe check! <coughs> oh, fuck! That felt good. Guys, 
What even was a vibe check? I don't know. So they start fighting each other, then they go back to tell her shithole of a house where everything's fucked, you shower in mud, and every time it rains, you have to cut the power. And wait a minute, it's raining right now, and you just said you cut the power whenever it does, so how the fuck is this line on? Doesn't matter, some time passes and they continue on with their shit jobs and fight every Saturday night, and people start noticing and watching and wanting to join in, and eventually they get their own space in the basement of a bar. And every night, Tyler gives out the rules of Fight Club, with the first two famously being do not talk about Fight Club, which I'm pretty sure I broke, but that's okay, they break it too, because how else would the fucking secret club, now secret club, because they're in the basement, keep going so fast over the course of the movie. Whatever, life goes on, Ed gets a call from Marla, she somehow got his number, and noticed that he has not been going to support groups because he found this new fight club thing, and she's like, sup jackass, where you been? Hey listen, I just downed a whole bottle of Xanax, wanna hear me die? And he's just like, oh, fucking, I swear to god, you wanna fucking and he puts the phone on the thing, right? He doesn't hang up, he just puts it on the thing, okay? That night he goes to bed and dreams of Marla fucking Tyler. And he wakes up and sees Marla in his house and he's like, Get the fuck out of my house, bitch! Tyler comes down he's like, Eh, hey, that was wild, bro. And he tells Ed never to talk to her about him or even mention him around her. Ever, never, ever, ever, never, never, ever. But how did Marla get there in the first place? Well, good question. You see, Tyler found the phone because it wasn't hanging up and you he heard her rambling and went over to her place. I don't know how he went over to her place. She, we didn't hear her give him the address or anything, but I'm gonna assume she did, right? He gets there, shakes a dildo and takes her back to his place and she's like, if you don't keep me awake on that, I'm gonna die. So he fucks the shit out of her. <laughs> so he continues to do so for many days. Ed tells her to fuck off for many days. Then he gets a call from the cops saying that his apartment was blown up by some homemade explosives. Then they go and steal some fat from a liposuction clinic to make some explosive soap and- Wait, what is this place? Dude, I think this is a question you should ask before doing anything illegal. You fucking moron. Doesn't matter, they spill some fat which is just- bleh. They get home, Tyler kisses Ed's hand and puts some spicy cocaine on it which makes the kiss start to burn. And he holds his hand down like, no, push you the pain, no pussy, don't be pussy. You gotta put like, come on man, go, yeah, I'm strong, you strong man. No weakness, no fear. <laughs> You gotta- <laughs> What the fuck am I doing? Then Tyler holds up his hand and shows him the same scar he's getting from that fucking kiss. And this right here is what did it for me. This is where it clicked in my brain. And if you still don't get it, that's fine. I'm gonna give you another chance to figure it out on your own. See, I'm nice like that. I know. Moving on. He makes some soap, then sells it. Ed threatens his boss, checks Marla for breast cancer, and then bumps into Bob, who has stopped going to support groups. Instead, he goes to Fight Club, but on a different day than Ed, because it has gotten so huge. A fact that Tyler points out next time they go there, but he gets interrupted by the owner of the bar, Lou, and his assistant. Yeah, that's it. And he tells them to get the fuck out of his bar. But Tyler just keeps going like, hey, you should join our club and pissing him off and stuff. So Lou starts beating Tyler up. All the while, Tyler's just fucking laughing, going like, oh yeah, hotter daddy. Lou finally lets go. Turns around, then fucking Tyler jumps onto him and fucking like, he just drools blood all over his face. Like, come on, Lou. We really like this place. Give us this place. Ugh. And Lou's like, fine. Shit, fuck. God damn, let me go. Really? That changed it. What? You don't seem convinced at all, man. Doesn't matter, but you know, they get him up. And over the next, I don't know how long, but over the next period of time, he gives out assignments to all the members of the club to do shit like start a fight, then lose it, feeds a bunch of birds some laxatives and some other insane shit. Ed's boss tries to fire him, but Ed's like, no, actually, you're gonna pay me. I'm not gonna do shit or else I'm gonna expose this company for making shit cars and killing people. Fuck you, dude. His boss calls for security, but Ed starts fucking himself up, punching himself and just beating himself all over the place and then ends up at his boss's feet to make it look like his boss punched him up, which makes his boss give him everything he wants and more. Then one night, Tyler holds an agent dude at gunpoint and tells him to follow his dreams. The screen shakes very violently and Marla almost sees Tyler and Ed at the same time, but then Tyler tells Marla to piss off through Ed. Huh? Huh? You didn't get it. Eh. Tyler and Ed are the same person. Then Tyler starts hazing and recruiting Fight Club members to make a Tyler army to do some crazy shit, like making the devil's smiley face, which is part of Project Mayhem that Tyler knows everything about, but Ed knows nothing about. And now, because of all the ludicrous shit they're doing, cops are on their asses, so they threaten to cut this politician's balls off if he doesn't keep the cops off their asses. Then Ed beats up a dude and gets in a car with Tyler not facing Blockhead, and they drive along, Ted and Ed have a big ass argument. I'm really curious what this looks like from these two guys' perspective, because they can clearly hear what they're saying, but obviously Tyler and Ed are the same person, so what's like, what does this look like? 
Is he having a seizure? Is he talking to himself left to right? Is he bobbing furiously? I don't know. I just want to know, man. Tyler tells Zed that he has to stop being a pussy and let go, figuratively of many things and physically of the steering wheel. They crash to another car, Ed passes out and wakes up in the house with Tyler nowhere to be seen and the Tyler army filling the house to the brim making explosive soap and no one wants to tell him anything about Project May. So he gets sad, goes out, meets Marla, tells her that Tyler isn't here and to beat it. Then he hears the ruckus inside and everybody rushes in. Everybody except for these two guys. Apparently they don't give a fuck, I don't know why. But that doesn't matter because Bobby got shot while doing an assignment with these two cunts. Then everybody starts chanting his name. But I have a question about the logistics of getting Bob over here because he's not exactly what you would call a light human being and the cop was right there. How the fuck did you carry him all the way over here, avoid the cops and avoid getting shot at the same time? Doesn't matter, let's keep going. Ed finds out that Tyler's been traveling all over America, starting up fight clubs and franchising, he calls it. And everywhere he goes, he asks questions, but everybody just answers like, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Wink. Everybody except for this guy. This guy calls him Tyler. And he's like, oh, fuck. So he calls up Marlon and asks her if they ever had sex. And he's like, yes. Then Tyler shows up and he's like, fuck you, dude. He said, you talk about me. Blah, 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 blah. And that he's everything Ed wanted to be. And then st everything starts clicking in Ed's brain, right? He's like, oh my god, I made this dude up in my brain. I am him. And Tyler takes over Ed's body every time he goes to sleep. Then his brain gets overwhelmed and he passes out, wakes up to find that Tyler has made a bunch of phone calls, so he flies back home and finds that the army has been mobilized to blow up a bunch of credit card companies and create chaos and delete all the debt from all the people. So he collects all the evidence he can, tries to keep Marla safe, who now hates him because he's a fucking psycho, and then he goes to the cops to give all the evidence to tell them all the fucking credit card explosion stuff happening. So this guy goes like, mm, mm, I'm gonna go check this shit out. And all these three cops turn out to be part of the fucking army and they're like, I really respect what you're doing here, sir. Sama titties. You see, Tyler told the army that no one should get in the way of Project Mayhem, not even himself. And anyone who does should have his balls cut off. So they start doing that. But he fights back, takes a gun, runs away through the fucking police station and boxers with a gun. Goes to one of them buildings that's about to be blown up to defuse one of the bombs. But Tyler's there to stop him and they start fighting each other. But they're the same person so he's fighting himself. It's fucking insane, man. Ed gets knocked out and Tyler takes him to a place where they can witness the fall of financial history with front row seats. Ed desperately tries to stop Tyler but plans already motion, motherfucker. So he's just like, oh, fuck my life, man. Wait a minute, if we're the same person and you've got the gun in your hand, that means the gun is in my hand. Suddenly Tyler's on the back foot, but he can't shoot Tyler. He tried it before and that doesn't do shit. So he just puts the gun to his own head, right? Then he puts it in his mouth, pulls the trigger. Tyler fucking dies, but he stays alive. How? Look at me now that fucking bullet came out of the side of his face shit, right? Because if Tyler has a bullet through his skull, he should have one too. That's how it works, okay? But whatever, still cool scene. So fucker's miraculously still alive. And some of the Tyler army dudes bring up Marla and some beer and he tells her everything's gonna be fine then half the city fucking blows up me this movie gets 69 cobras out of three burritos